أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد My dear brothers and sisters, my dear viewers, wherever you are, I seize the opportunity of the start of the holy month of Ramadan to congratulate all of you on this wonderful occasion and I wish you the best and the fruitful spiritual and joyous Ramadan the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran Hudan lil-Nasi wa bayinatin min al-Huda wal-Farqan we are all have been in a situation where we are waiting for or are anticipating a very important person to arrive. Whether that person is a loved one or a long time friend or a very important person, an executive or high ranking official, we have been in a situation that we are waiting, we were waiting and anticipating for that person. We may differ in some aspect of a preparation, but the common theme is the same. We take our time in a preparing for that event. We take our time in a planning for that event. We make sure that at the moment of the arrival of that person, we are ready. We select our words carefully, even our statements are carefully chosen. We make sure that all the amenities and conditions are available. We make sure that the scene is suitable for that event and for that meeting. Eventually, we take a stride in making sure that every aspect of this meeting comes fruitful and suitable so we can utilize it at its maximum. Why? Because it's very a great opportunity, because it's a great moment. And maybe it's not so great after all. However, we do our best to make sure that we take advantage of every single minute of that event. Why? Because it cannot be re repeated. That great moment is intolerant of being repeated again. It's only once the opportunity can be easily missed. Therefore, we plan ahead of time, we spend hours and hours for planning and reviewing and editing our statements to make sure that that event turns to be successful because we cannot tolerate losing that opportunity. We May we want to make sure that we benefit the maximum amount of benefit of that event. When we look at the holy month of Ramadan, we see that it has similar situation. Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, is an extraordinary opportunity that we cannot tolerate missing. If we miss this year, this is a great opportunity, we never know whether we will have the chance next year to repeat this opportunity. We don't know if next year I and you are alive and healthy and can perform our functions again. Therefore, we should consider that this could be our last opportunity, our last month of Ramadan in this life. When we met with such kind of opportunity, what should we do? The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the most favorable month has arrived. Therefore, you need to make sure that we take as much opportunity, maximize our opportunities as much as possible. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says that you are faced with two important opportunities. Number one, the valuable guest that is arriving upon you. And second, 
that you have become a valuable guest arriving on the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have two opportunities at one occasion. First, a valuable guest in the name of month of Ramadan has arrived upon us. Second, we have become as a valuable guest to the Almighty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Subhanallah, mada yastaqbilukum wa mada tastaqbilun. Do you know what is awaiting for you and what you are awaiting for? These are a great opportunities that hardly anybody can recognize. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, elaborate farther. At the advent of Ramadan, he had this eloquent and a beautiful sermon where he says, Ayyuhannas, but Akbala ilaykum shahrullahi bil barakati wal rahmati wal makhfara. O people, the month, the most favorable month of Allah has arrived upon you with the blessings, mercy, and forgiveness. Shahrun, who are in the Allah of the shahur, a month that's in the view of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered to be the most favorable. وَأَيَّامُهُ أَفْضَلُ الْأَيَّامِ And its daylights are the best daylights. وَلَيَالِيهِ أَفْضَلُ الْلَيَالِي And its eves and nights are the best among all nights and eves. وَسَاعَاتُهُ أَفْضَلُ السَّاعَاتِ even its hours, its minutes, are considered to be the best among all hours and moments. Therefore, you need to take the opportunity. Then the Prophet mentions this a great effect of the Holy Ramadan, where he says, هُوَ شَهْرٌ دُعِيتُمْ فِيهِ إِلَىٰ ضِيَافَةِ اللَّهِ وَجُعِلْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ كَرَامَتِهِ it is in this month that you are considered to be the noble guests of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should treat ourselves as the noble guests arriving upon the court of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the months or calendars are two kind. One, is the solar calendar, the solar year. And the other one is the lunar calendar or the lunar year. The importance of the solar calendar is very well known. We know it by evidence and by experience. We know at what time of the year winter arrives and at what time of the year spring arrives and what time of the year summer and fall arrive. These we experience through years. The evidence have shown us what importance a solar calendar can bring. Therefore, you see that the farmers, the peasants get ready for those moments. They get ready to cultivate the land, to prepare the land, to plant the seeds well ahead of spring, for example. When the spring comes, they plant the seeds and then they pollinate the trees. They harvest the crops by time because experience have showed us at what particular date, what season will start and what season will end. The same you can say about the migrants. There are migrants who travel at certain season of the year at what part of the, the planet to another part of the planet. Even the animals, the birds understand the significance of the solar year. The migrant birds, they travel for long, long distances from one part of the planet to another part of the planet due to changes in the climate. All of these have been seen and sensed by experience. We have 
noticed the importance of the solar year by its evidence and by our experience. But what about the lunar year? What about the lunar months and lunar calendar? How can we recognize, recognize its significance? Unfortunately, physically, we cannot tell the significance of the lunar year unless we are told by the divine revelation. Either it is narrated in the Holy Quran or by the narrations of the infallibles. Those two sources that tell us the importance, for example, of particular eves and nights, the importance of particular months. For example, we would have no clue what is the importance of Laylatul Qadr is, the night of destiny is, unless we read and recite the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran would tell us the importance of the night of destiny, Laylatul Qadr. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min al -fishar. The nights of destiny is more valuable than 1,000 months or 30,000 nights. We had no clue recognizing this if the Almighty God has not revealed the secrets. When we look at the Islamic traditions and Islamic literature, we see ample, ample, and abundance of these narrations that speak about the importance of those calendar, uh, those lunar calendar moments. For example, the Laylatul Qadr, the eve of destiny in the holy month, or the eve of Mitshaban, or the 27th of Rajab, or the day of Arafah. These narrations tell us the significance of those important days. Now, how important they are, we do not know except that we take it by faith from the infallibles. They are the ones who tell us the exact amount of importance that we are experiencing. Therefore, we should make sure that we do not lose those important night's benefits. We should not lose those opportunities because if we lose those opportunities, we don't know how much and how many good things we will be losing. For example, a man come to Imam al-Sadiq and tells him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, it is the month of Rajab and I want to compensate for that month. What should I do to compensate for those days that have already passed? The Imam alayhi salam says, لَقَدْ فَاتَكَ مِنَ الثَّوَابِ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ مَبْلَغُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ What you have missed is so much that no one would know except the Almighty. Therefore, our duty, brothers and sisters, in these holy days and nights is to recognize the importance of the holy month. Sometimes we are totally oblivious. We don't know whatsoever the importance of the month of Ramadan. Sometimes we have only a vague and general understanding. Like someone who has his own iPhone, the very advanced iPhone, and he only knows certain capability of this phone. He just uses it for calling friends and some texting. But he doesn't use any of those applications. He's not aware of those tremendous applications that are in the iPhone. This is a great loss as well. Therefore, we need to understand the value of the holy month of Ramadan. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, لو يعلم العبد ما في رمضان if the person, the believer, knows for sure what is the value of Ramadan, he would wish that the value of Ramadan would be, the, the duration of Ramadan would be for one year, one whole year. Why? Because of so much importance and values that Ramadan has. 
going back again to the first statements that we said, we have to be prepared for this holy month. Sometimes our preparedness can be physical. We should be ready physically for those great moments. We should make sure that our bodies are fit for those days that we observe fasting. We should make sure that we don't jeopardize our health ahead of Ramadan and make sure that we end up fasting the whole days, the 30 or 29 days of the entire month of the holy month of Ramadan. And we should be spiritually ready for this great month. In the same manner that when we get ready by cleansing ourselves and wearing the best attire when we meet very important person, we also should make sure that our soul and spirit be immaculate, cleansed from any odors, from any pugnations, odors of insincerity, hypocrisy, jealousy, indecency. These are the contaminations and stains that sit on our souls that we should make sure we get rid of them before the start of the holy month of Ramadan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, if you want to see the full benefit of this great month, then you should complete it in its complete course, just like the antibiotic course of medication that we take. You should take the entire cycle of the antibiotic tablets in order for them to be beneficial. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ In order to see the full potential of the holy month of Ramadan, we should complete its entire days. I pray to the Almighty that give us the ability and the guidance that we observe the fasting of this great month of Ramadan. اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا كريم يا مقيم يا عظيم يا قديم يا عليم يا حليم يا حكيم سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا سيد السادات يا مجيب الدعوات يا رافع الدرجات يا ولي الحسنات يا غافر الخطيئات يا معطي المسألات يا قابل التوبات يا سامع الأصوات يا عالم الخفيات يا دافع البليات سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا خير الغافرين يا خير الفاتحين يا خير الناصرين يا خير الحاكمين يا خير الرازقين 
يا خير الوارثين يا خير الحامدين يا خير الذاكرين يا خير المنزلين يا خير المحسنين سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأوث الأوث خلصنا من النار يا رب One of the most eloquent and beautiful words of prayers and supplications is called Dua al Joshan al Kabir, the Grand Armor Prayer. It is narrated by Al Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam that one day one of the battles that the Prophet, peace be upon him, has taken part into, where he was wearing a heavy armor, the angel Jibrail came down to tell him, Ya Muhammad, God sends his salutation to you. And he asked you to remove the armor that is giving you trouble and hardship in wearing. Remove this armor and God will give you something instead much better that can you and your soldiers and your nation can use. When you use this, you will seek a protection from the Almighty. And he gave him this beautiful dua called Dua al Joshan al Kabir that consists of 100 segments. In each segment, there are 10 names of God's, 10 attributes of the Almighty, Al Asma al Husna. The segment number 55 include 11 names. So the total of the names, the beautiful names and attributes of God are 1100 and it starts like this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika ya Allahu ya Rahman ya Rahim ya Kareemu ya Muqeemu ya Azeem ya Qadeemu ya Alimu ya Halimu ya Hakim Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa ant Al-Ghawth Al-Ghawth Khalasna min al-Nar ya Rabb we will try our best to translate some of its beautiful vocabulary. In the first segment, start with Allahumma. Allahumma is similar to Ya Allah, O God, that Arabs use at the beginning of each statement. Then the word says, Inni as'aluka bismika, O my Lord, I ask you, I ask thy, I ask thee by thy name. When you look carefully, you see that the supplications and the words of prayers of Ahlul Bayt always use an intermediary, a vehicle, a means between us and the Lord. We never say that we beg you or your divine existence. Rather, we beg the name of God because he himself has told us how to start the prayers when we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of God We use the name of God As an intercession As a vehicle, as a means That take us closer to the Almighty When you look at the tradition of Ahlul Bayt salam, You see always the input They bring an intermediary Between us and the Lord Sometimes it is the name of the Lord. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika by your name. Sometimes the attributes of the Lord. For example, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, when he starts the eloquent dua of Kumail, he says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rahmatika allati wasa'at kulla shay, wa bi quwwatika allati qaharta biha kulla shay. I beg you, I call you upon the mercy that has engulfed everything. I beg you by your power, 
that has overpowered everything. So we always bring something as an intermediary to seek that intercession that it gets us closer to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you use other valuable entities like the infallibles, like the Prophet peace be upon him. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people who have committed sins and incurred injustice against themselves, when they seek repentance, they go to the Prophet peace be upon him and they ask repentance from the Prophet. When the, pro when the Prophet peace be upon him repents and asks forgiveness for them, then God will forgive them. As the ayah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِظَّلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمْ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا So this is the first segment. The theme of the second segment is that we seek help and assistance from the Almighty. Where it says, يَا سَيِّدَ السَّادَاتِ يَا مُجِيبَ الدَّعَوَاتِ يَا رَافِعَ الدَّرَجَاتِ يا ولي الحسنات يا غافر الخطيئات يا معطي المسألات يا قابل التوبات يا سامع الأصوات يا عالم الخفيات يا دافع البليات We stop at this beautiful word يا غافر الخطيئات The one who forgives the sins When we incur injustice and wrongdoing against some people Maybe you do it once, they forgive you Maybe you do it twice, you f they forgive you. Maybe you do it three, four, five times until a point that they will abandon you. Even our parents, even those that are very close to us, our loved ones, if we do wrongdoings to them multiple times, at one point, they abandon us. They, we become unforgiven. The fact that the only entity that can be forgiven no matter how many sins we do, it's the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how piles of sins we commit, still the Almighty has this beautiful attribute. Ya ghafir al khati'at. He will wash away all our sins. Not only that, He will even change those sins if we seek repentance and forgiveness from God. He will change those sins into good things into reward as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says illa man taba wa aman wa amila salihan fa ulaika yubaddilu allahu sayyatihim hasanat God will change those wrongdoings into good things into rewards provided that we seek genuine repentance the third segment brothers and sisters it talks about seeking superiority attaining honor and dignity where it says ya khayr al ghafirin ya khayr al fatihin ya khayr al nasirin ya khayr al hakimin the best out of the forgivers the best out of the victorious the best out of the judges the best out of the bread winners here it tells us how you need to attain to the highest level of things you do not leave yourself only subsided to simple things. If you enroll in a class, you better be the best in the class. If you are a judge, you want to be the fairest judge. If you are a doctor, you want to be the best doctor. This is how the Almighty has told us. This is how we, we need to be. As he says in one ayah, in the words of Muttaqeen, he says, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Make us the best out of muttaqeen, the leader of the muttaqeen. Meaning that you, be, you become the best of your class. Or Al-Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says, وَجْعَلْنِي مِنْ أَحْسَنِ عَبِيدِكَ نَصِيبًا عِنْدَكَ وَأَقْرَبِهِمْ مَنْزِلَةً مِنْكَ Make me among the best, the closest of people to you. O oh people, surely loyalty and truthfulness are twins. I do not know a better shield against the assaults of sin than it. 
one who realizes the reality of return to the next world never betrays. We are in a period when most of the people regard betrayal as wisdom. In these days, the ignorance call it excellence of cunning. What is the matter with them? Allah may destroy them. One who has been through thick and thin of life finds the excuses to be preventing him from orders and prohibitions of Allah. But he regards them despite capability to succumb to them and follows the commands of Allah. While one who has no restraints of religion seizes the opportunity and accepts the excuses for not following the commands of Allah.